Tulisema kwamba hiyo <clears throat> tunapofanya biashara au kazi ya mikono yetu we had said as we we are putting our hands to work or we are doing business isiwe tu kwa ajili ya sisi kupata faida may it not be to our own personal benefit only lazima iwe na value ya, ku, ya kuwajibu kwa wengine but it ought to be a value to bring an answer to el, to somebody else ile ambao ni strength kwako what is a strength to you ile ambao ni nguvu kwako what is strength to you ile ambao Mungu anakufunulia kwamba amekupa neema katika eneo hiyo that which god reveals to you and he shows you he has given you grace iwe ni vipawa mbalimbali be it different gifts labda kipawa cha kuongea kupana communication kama pastor ametuambia the gift of being an orator to communicate well just iwe ni kipawa ka kazi ya mikono fulani or the gift that comes through the work of your hands lazima iwe kwa ajili ya kugeuka jibu kwa wengine it has to become an answer to somebody else hata kama unafanya biashara whether you're doing business lazima uangalie kwamba je biashara hii inageuka jibu kwa watu wengine or something else you must ask yourself is this activity or this business bringing a solution to somebody else na ndio utaanza kupata faida lakini hiyo faida itakuwa ya kuimarisha hiyo kazi ili endelee kuwa jibu kwa wengine and that's when you can receive profit or benefit but that benefit and profit actually adds value to other people and sustains that activity siku ya leo today tunaenda kuangalia gisi unaweza kuwa bora mara 10 ya kile ambacho Mungu amekupa i want us to discuss and to know how can i become 10 times better through that which god has given me wiki mbili zilizopita 2 weeks ago nilikuwa naongea na rafiki yangu pastor george yule wa south africa i was talking to my friend pastor george from south africa na akaniambia kwamba kuna mtu alimuita akamwambia muombe. Mimi napenda sana kuongea na watu ambao tuko kwenye direction direction moja ya passion zangu. And I, he told me that a few days ago, uh, earlier somebody had called him and asked him to pray for him, you know, to pray for that person. You know the thing is I love talking to people who have my passions whom I know are in the same direction as mine. Kwamba tukiongea utamaliza maongezi na umepata value, umepata plus na sio tu maongezi ya ambao hayana faida. People that after I talk to them I realize at the end of the day there is value addition. We have a common direction that we are going. Not just talking mere words, empty words. Kuna kitu nitamwambia kitakuwa plus kwake. Kuna kitu ataniambia kitakuwa plus kwangu. There is something I will share with them will be addition to me and something that they'll share with me that I'll share with them it will be an addition to them. Kwa hiyo akaniambia kwamba kuna mtu ambaye alimuita amuombe. So he told me there is somebody who called him him to pray for him. Na Pastor George alipoanza kumwombea akamwambia uh, the Lord is going to uh, to make you 10 times better than who you are today. Pastor George was like a prophetic word. Alipoanza kumwombea akamtamkia akamwambia Mungu atakufanya mara kumi ya kile ambacho wewe ulicho leo. Na yule mtu akaambia mm, kwanza nina struggle ku maintain pale nilipo itakuweje niwe mara kumi bora. And that person said Uh, Pastor George, it is difficult for me even to maintain my position right now. How then can I become 10 times better? Akasema mimi naona kama hiki kitu haikiwezekani. And he said probably this thing is impossible. Lakini Pastor George akamwambia hiyo kitu inawezekana. But Pastor George told him it is actually very possible. Kwa hiyo Pastor George akaniuliza. Therefore Pastor George asked me kwamba wewe unaonaje katika hiyo kitu? A question, what is your view about this? Nikamwambia, I told him. Mimi ninaona kwamba hicho kitu kinawezekana. I think this matter is possible. Lakini ninachoamini sio kwamba kitakuwa automatic. But what I believe is it's not an automatic thing. Ten times better mara kumi zaidi. Itakuwa itakuwa like my goal. That's my goal. Pale ndio nataka kufika. It will be lengo langu. I want to get there. Nitaanza kujiuliza kwamba nitafanyaje ili nifike kwenye hiyo lengo. Myself, it, labda kama ina step kumi. Kama unavopanda ngazi unaenda kwenye gorofa ya juu. Uwezi tu ukajikuta ghafla umefika kwenye hizo hatua kumi za kuwa bora zaidi. You cannot just find yourself there 10 steps better 
before you go through a process. Lazima utapiga hatua ya kwanza. You must take the first step. Lazima utakutana na upinzani fulani. And you'll find opposition on the way. Lazima utaendelea. You have to call, go on. Hata ukiwa bora mara mbili tayari ni faida. If you are two times better that is profitable. Alafu baadaye utaenda mara tatu. Then you will go to three times. Siku moja usioijua. One appointed day that you don't know about. Utajikuta mara kumi bora zaidi. You will find yourself 10 times better than what you were before. nikamwambia Later on I told him. Nilivyokuwa na kujibu. As I was answering you. Tayari nimepata ujumbe. Already I have received a message. Wa kufundisha watu wangu. To teach my people. Bwana asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Nikasema tayari naona kwamba nilivyokuwa na kujibu nimepata ujumbe. I I realized that as I'm talking to you I have received a message. Sasa Jumapili iliyofuata. Now the following Sunday. Ah ndio akaja Rose akatufundisha. That is when Rosemary came to teach us. Ni wangapi wanasema kwamba kwenye mambo mengi ambayo aliongea kuna yale ambayo tayari tulikuwa tumeyapata. How many can testify that in, in the many things she spoke about there are things already we had already received. Yeye alikuwa kama anaendeleza. She was just continuing. Lakini akasema zaidi sana kama professional katika eneo hilo. But she zeroed in in the profession to become a professional. Sasa baadaye Jumatatu Pastor George akaniambia. Now on Monday later on Pastor George told me. Nilifuata YouTube I followed through the YouTube message. Mbone haujafundisha na ulisema utafundisha hiyo neno. Why didn't you teach and yet you said you'll teach? Nikasema tulipata mgeni. I told him. Lakini ule mgeni alikuwa ni professional na alituambia kabisa mambo ambayo yanatufanya tufaa kwa kazi ya mikono yetu. We received a guest and that guest was a professional and she came to specifically deal with activities to do with our professionals. Lakini Jumapili but now the following Sunday nitaingia kwenye hiyo neno. I will get to that message. Na ninajua kwamba leo ataangalia. And I know she, he will be watching. <laughs> Bwana asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Kweli inawezekana tuwe mara kumi bora ya kile tulicho? Is it possible? Yes, it's possible for us to become 10 times better than what we are today. Na hiyo ndio ambayo nataka kukuambia. And that's what I want to share with you today. Inawezekana kabisa tukawa mara kumi bora. It is possible to become 10 times better. Lakini lazima tulipe gharama. But we have to pay a price. Kama Pastor Ben alivyosema, Just like Pastor Ben said. Shauku yangu sana ndani ya maisha. Passion in your life. Na ndani ya utumishi huu. Passion in this ministry. Ni kuona watu maisha yao yanabadilika kutoka kwa kiwango fulani kufika kwa kiwango fulani. It's for me to see people's life turn, changing from one point to another higher level. Kama imekuwa passion ya Ben, if it has become Ben's passion. Nafikiri ameitoa kwa mzazi pia. I think he has received from the parents. <laughs> Na alivyosema hivyo nimefurahi. And as he said that I was glad. Kwa sababu inatakiwa iwe mbegu ndani ya kila mmoja wetu. Because it's supposed to be a seed in each and every one of us. Kwamba katika ile mguso ambao Mungu amekupa. That in the impact God has given you. Make sure kwamba umetoa watu mahali umewafikisha mahali. Make sure you move people from one level to another level. Wakati tunaanza utumishi, as when we began ministry, tulikuwa nafikiri kwamba kufanyikiwa katika utumishi ni kuona umepata umati wa watu wengi. We thought that prospering in, in ministry is to have a big crowd of people. Na hakika tumefanya hivyo. And yes we have attained that. Mpaka nilivyofunuliwa na Mungu. Until when God revealed to me. Kwamba ni lazima uwafundishe watu wapate roho yako. Is that you have have to teach people wawe na roho yako to embrace your spirit vipawa vyako wavipate for them to have your gifts nguvu zako wazipate to have your strength Hiyo and power kuwa mwana. that is how they become sons na nikishapata wana and once i have sons hao ndio wataweza kuzalisha then the sons will bear watazaa nao wana and they will also produce ambao wanafanana nao that are looking like them siku ya siku day one day utakuja kupata umati ambao unafanana na wewe manake wanatembea kwenye hayo maono na wamezipata zile zile ile tabia ya kiungu ndani yako na yale mambo uliyowafundisha yamekuwa hai ndani yao you will have a multitude of people in your own image and likeness people who have received your spirit and they have received your gift and they have what you have Yaani sio kwamba tunakupa tu maneno ya roho zetu lakini hata nafsi zetu zinaambukizwa kwenu. We not only give you our spirits the word of the gospel but also our souls are impacted and imparted to you. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord Jesus. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord Jesus. Kwa hiyo unaweza ukaona pia success katika ubora wa watu jinsi ambavyo walivyotoka kwenye stage fulani na wamefika kwenye stage fulani. Kiroho 
kinasi maendeleo ya maisha therefore you can identify success also when you look at people and you find that they have moved from one stage of life to another higher level of life in every sphere of their lives na kila mtu mahali hapa and everyone in this place anaweza kasema you can attest tangu nimejiunga na huduma hii that from the time i joined this ministry kuna mahali nilipokuwa nilivyoingia i was at this point when i joined na kuna mahali ambapo nimefika and now i am here kama hiyo imekupata nyosha tu mkono mahali uliko you are a witness of that kwamba kuna mahali nilivyokuwa if you are a witness and you say tangu nimejiunga na huduma hii I was at this point since Una I joined this ministry. Kuna mahali bora zaidi ambapo nimefika. And right now I am in a better place. Niombe nione mkono wako. By show of hand, Mungu let me see you. Sana. Praise the Lord Jesus. Na Mungu apewe sifa. And glory to God. Lakini leo, but today, nataka kukuambia. I want to tell you. Pale ulipofika, where you are at? Usiridhike. Don't be satisfied. Maana Mungu anahitaji kwamba uwe mara 10 bora ya pale ulipo. Because God wants you to become 10 times better than where you are. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord Jesus. Uwe mara 10 bora. 10 times better. Kwa pale ulipofika. From where you are today. Tusome katika kitabu cha Daniel. Open your Bible to the book of Daniel. Tutarilai kwenye experience na maneno ya Mungu katika kitabu cha Daniel sura ya kwanza. We are going to rely and totally depend on the word of God. Daniel chapter 1 Na mstari wa 20 Daniel chapter 1 verse 20 I will read Daniel chapter 1 verse 20 And in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them he found them 10 times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in all his realm Piga mstari hapo kwenye 10 times better. Underline that word that says 10 times better. Hiyo ndio neno ambao tunaianza. Mara kumi zaidi. Piga mstari hapo. That is the lead scripture in our message today. Wakajikuta wamekuwa mara kumi zaidi ya hao wengine wote ambao walikuwa wanashindana nao. They found themselves 10 times better than the others who were contending with them. Kwa hiyo kama Biblia imeiandika Therefore if it is written in the Bible Ina maana inawezekana Then it means it's possible Ina maana inawezekana It means it is possible Kila kitu ni mtazamo Everything is all about perspective Na hiyo ndio kuambukizwa kwa maono And that is the impartation of the vision Unaweza kuanza kwa ajili ya yale maisha unayoyapitia You can start through the life that you're living Unaona kwamba hata maisha yamenishinda And you tell yourself I'm giving up life is difficult Lakini mzazi wa kiroho atakwambia But your spiritual father will tell you Usijali Fear not. Mimi ninavyokuona as I see you. Naona kwamba unaweza. I know that you can. Na Mungu anaenda kukupa. And God is going to grant kwa bora mara kumi zaidi. 10 times better. Baada ya kukuambia hayo, after telling you that, unaanza kuyatafakari. You meditate upon it. Kesho unavyokuja, the following day when you come, anakuonesha kwa mfano. He, he or she shows you by example. Anakuambia mimi nilikuwa hivi na nimekuwa hivi. Tells you I was this way and now I'm here. Na anaanza kukuza vipao vilivyomo ndani yako. And they provoke the growth of the gifts in you. Na ukikubali kufundishwa na kuongozwa. Now if you agree to be led and to be guided. E utaanza kupata neema. You will receive grace. Kwa sababu yale maneno ambayo mzazi anakuambia. Because the was that the spirit of father share neema ndani ya maisha yako they release grace in your life ninakwambia kuna neema ya kitume mahali hapo i want to submit to you there is apostolic grace in this neema place. ya kitume sio neema ya kawaida apostolic grace is not common ni neema ambayo inaachilia na nguvu ndani yake it is that which comes with power in it unaona watu ambao walikuwa wa kawaida you look at ordinary people kwa ajili ya neema ya kitume and because of that apostolic walikuwa grace walikuwa ni watu wa kawaida because of that grace lakini wanafanya kazi ambayo sio za kawaida ordinary men do works for ox wanageuka watu ambao ni wa mguso they become people of impact kwa sababu neema imeachiliwa because grace has been released na imeachiliwa na nguvu ya kitume and it, it is accompanied by the apostolic power nguvu ya kitume ni nguvu ya utendaji apostolic power is an is the power that puts things into practice yesu kristo alisema the lord jesus christ said katika yohana 4 in john 4 kwamba chakula changu ni kuyafanya mapenzi ya baba na kuyakamilisha that my food is to eat my food that i eat is to do the will of the father yani, and to accomplish it sio sio tu kunena kuyafanya not only to speak it but to do it to do the will of my father kufanya mapenzi ya baba 
and to finish it na kuyatimiza ndani ya nguvu ya kitume in the apostolic power kuna uwezo there is power wa utendaji to do sio maneno matupu not mere words kuna uwezo there is power wa utendaji to do na kuna uwezo and there is power wa ukamilifu to accomplish acha nikwambie let me submit to you wewe ambao unaanza vitu na haumalizi you have started something you don't finish it bwana anaenda kuachilia upako juu yako to release anointing upon you upako ambao utakufanya uanze na ukamilishe that causes you to start and to accomplish upako ambao utakufanya uanze na umalize vizuri that causes you to start and to finish well na sio kumaliza tu just to finish unamaliza na umekuwa mara 10 bora you complete it and you are 10 times better bwana asifiwe praise the lord jesus ni kama mtu ambaye anapanda bustani is like a person who is anateseka na jua anaangaika kuleta mafuta lakini maua yakianza kuchanua when the flowers are blossoming anasikia raha they are feeling joy anasikia furaha in their heart maana kile kitu ambacho alikuwa anakihitaji that which they needed anakiona kwenye utendaji they see it are coming to pass. Maneno tunayowaambia. The words we speak to you. Hayatabaki kuwa maneno. Will not remain mere words. Yatakuwa uzima. They'll become life. Yatakuwa uzima. They'll become life. Na kila atakayekuona. And everybody who looks at you. Ataona mwana wa kitume. They will look and see an apostolic son. Because it is built. It is created in you. Ni nguvu za utendaji. It is power to do. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord Jesus. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Leo tunaenda kuangalia. Today we are going to look at. Ni jinsi gani tunaweza kuwa mara 10 bora? How can I become 10 times better? Ni njia ndefu. It is a long process. Lakini inawezekana. But it is possible. Inawezekana. Very possible. Kama tukiwa upande tukiwa pamoja na Mungu. If we are on God's side. Bwana akiwa upande wetu. The Lord on our side. Hakika jambo hilo litatimia. That thing will come to pass. Number one. Ya kwanza. Unavosikia haya maneno. As you hear this word. Yanaamsha nini ndani yako? What do they awaken in you? Yanaamsha nini ndani yako? What is being awakened in you? Hakuna jinsi nitaongea na wewe. There is no way I'll speak to you. Uende jinsi ulivyoingia. And then you go back the same way. Haiwezekani. Impossible. Lazima haya maneno this word yatakushawishi kitu fulani you ought to provoke something yatakushawishi kitu kitu fulani to confess something in you na yatazaa kitu fulani and they will bear something in you na yatazaa nini what will they bear yatazaa nini what will they produce baada ya kusikia haya maneno after hearing this word yatazaa nini ndani yao what will the words bear yataleta desire mpya they'll bring a new desire itaingia hali fulani There is a situation a condition ya kutamani cho kitu kitoke that comes in you which will condition you to desire that thing to come to pass bwana yesu asifiwe praise the lord kwanza utaona kwamba inawezekana number one, you will realize it's possible kwa mfano tulisema habari za manyumba we spoke about building houses tuliachilia neema hii we release that grace tuliachilia kitu hicho we release that thing tulikiongelea na kukiongelea we spoke about it and repeatedly baadaye later on ikaanza umbika hali fulani ya kutamani something was built and created in you so, a desire a desire was created baada ya kusikia kuna shauku ambayo iliumbika ndani yako after you heard this word nahitaji nifanye hivi i want to do this nahitaji nifanye hivi i desire hivi. to do this hizo ndio nguvu za prophetic word that is the prof- that is the power that emanates from the prophetic word ambaye kiongozi wako anakuambia kitu paka kinaumbika kinakuwa uzima your leader tells you something until it is built created in you formed in you na nitaongea haya maneno kwa mifano mifano nikikuongelea usijisikie vibaya i will speak this message by giving examples when i talk about you please don't don't be afraid maana mungu anasema mambo nayo yasikia mambo nayo yaona mambo nayo yapitia uyanene uyanene kwa watu wa karibu uyanene kwa watu wa mbali the lord spoke to me the things you see the things you hear the things that you have received speak to them to people near and people afar Namkumbuka siku moja Rachel waliniambia na mume wake I remember one day Rachel together with her husband walikuwa wanataka mtoto They wanted a child Na baada ya kuomba After prayer Mungu akanipa neno God gave me a word Nikaenda kwao I went to them wakanipokea nikaambia and i told them mungu anaenda kuwapatia mtoto wa kiume god is going to give you a son na ule mtoto wa kiume and that male child kuingia kwake ndani ya hiyo nyumba He is coming into your house. Kunaenda kuingia na baraka. Will be accompanied with a blessing. Nikasema Mungu them, anaenda huku, anaenda hukufanya designer. Utakuwa unashona nguo. I told Rachel God is going to make you a designer. You'll be a sewer of clothes. Na, na Mungu atenda kuifanyikisha hiyo kazi. 
As a designer, God will prosper the work of your hands. Ni kweli si kweli. Is it true or not? Kitu ninachopenda Rachel ni mtu ambaye ana imani kwa kile anachokisikia. One thing I love about Rachel, she has faith in whatever words she speaks. Akaanza kuandika hayo mambo. She started writing down those words. Baadaye, naamini alikaa na mume wake. I believe she sat down Kwamba with her husband. Kwamba tutafanyaje hiyo kitu ambao Mungu amesema? And she said, what can we do? to accomplish that which God has spoken. Kwa sababu aliamini. Because she believed. Ilibidi aanze alikuwa hajui kushona. She didn't know how to sew. Hakujua jinsi atakuwa designer. How she can become a designer. Lakini alianza sasa kutia katika matendo. But she started putting that word into practice. Akaleta watu wanaoshona kutoka kwa Ivory Coast. She brought people who are good tailors all the way from Ivory Coast. Unayasikia unayafanyia kazi? Let me ask you whatever you hear are you putting it in practice Inaleta wazo ndani yako Does it bring a design you Inaleta shauku ndani yako Does it bring a thought in you Unavosema nitafanya hivi As you say I will do this Nitafanya hivi I will do that Kuna watu ni specialist There are people who are professionals Wakusema nitafanya hiki In speaking Nitafanya hiki I will do this Ninaweza kufanya hiki I can do this Inabaki tu ni mawazo But it becomes it remains empty words they don't Inabaki ni mawazo They don't put it in practice Na ikibaki ni mawazo The more it remains Bada only a thought after a while mawazo yatapotea the thought will disappear hakika yatapotea indeed i tell you they will disappear na huo mzigo utapotea and even that burden will disappear mara nyingi inakuwa na mawazo mengi ya vitu vya fanya i have many ideas naanza kuviwaza i think about it naanza kuviwaza nasikia shauku inanipata inanipata i meditate and i i i, I sense in my body there is a desire mara tu nitashindwa kuanza kuyafanyia kazi the moment i fail to put that into practice kwanza yatapotea number one will disappear hiyo mzigo itapotea that body will disappear hiyo hiyo shauku that desire also hiyo mzigo that burden itapotea will also go as vapor kwa nini why kwa sababu hiyo ilikuwa ni kairos moment because it was a kairos moment ilikuwa neema ya mungu inaambatana na hicho kitu god then was accompanied with that idea nguvu za kimungu zinaambatana na hicho kitu the divine power accompanied that idea lakini kwa kuwa mungu hatakulazimisha but because god cannot force himself hiyo muda itapita that time will go na nguvu za hiyo kitu itapita and that grace and power will also go na ukitaka kukifanya and when you want to do it later utasikia hakina nguvu tena you will say there is no power pushing you maana hiyo neema hicho kitu imepita no motivation because that grace is gone kila kitu kinashuka na neema yake everything comes with its grace ambaye mwenzako kila kitu kinashuka na neema yake everything comes down with its grace kwa maana nyingine in other words ukianza kupata hiyo mawazo the moment you receive that idea ukipata hiyo desire when you get that desire kwa mfano for example hauwezi kunywa maji kama hausikii hiyo hali hiyo shauku hiyo desire kunywa maji water if you don't have thirst lazima usikie kiu thirst will cause you na wakati unataka kula and when you want to eat uwezi kulazimishwa kula you cannot be forced to eat lazima upate njaa you have to be hungry na una, una desire kula and you desire to eat una desire kukunywa maji you desire to drink water uwezi kumtumikia mungu you cannot serve god bila hiyo desire kumtumikia without mungu without the desire to serve him ile shauku ya kumtumikia mungu that desire to want to serve him ndio itakufanya umtumikie mungu because you to serve him uwezi kuanza kumwimbia mungu you cannot start singing for god Hauwezi kumwimbia Mungu. You can't sing for him. Kama hautamani mwenyewe kuimba. If you don't have the desire to sing. Mwimbaji anaimba chooni. A singer sings in the bathroom. Anaimba bafuni. They sing everywhere. Anaimba chumbani. They sing in their rooms. Anaimba barabarani. They sing on the way. Anasikiliza nyimbo za wengine. They listen to other songs. Yaani ana, anakuwa na hiyo hali ya kutamani. Every time they have that desire to sing and to hear to listen to songs. Lazima ujue kwamba hiyo desire ambayo imekuja imekuja na neema yake. You have to identify and to know that desire that is in you is accompanied by grace. Lakini hiyo desire ikiendelea kuwa desire Now that desire if it remains at the level of just desire Itaisha nguvu It will be powerless Itaisha nguvu It will become powerless Lazima sasa uchukue uamuzi You have to take a step Baada ya desire hatua ya pili ni lazima uchukue decision After desire the second step is to make a decision a resolve Kwa hiyo Dada Rachel ali, alichukua decision. Sister Rachel took a decision. Pamoja na mume wake. Together with her husband. Wakaleta washonaji wanajua kushona. They brought tailors who were professionals. Mume wake akampa hela. 
The husband funded the activity. Kamupa machine. And also bought assets. Machine. They bought machines. Akaanza safari za kwenda Dar. She started traveling to Dar es Salaam. Kununua machine, kununua vitambaa, kununua different machines, sewing machines and also uh, uh, clothing. Na na akaanza kuongea na hao wafanyakazi. And she started speaking to the workers. Jinsi ya malipo. How to pay them. Na kila kitu. And everything to do with that. Biashara ikaanza. The business started. Biashara ilivyoanza. When the business started. Kwa sababu ilianza na neema. Because grace prompted the beginning of that activity. Alikuwa tayari ni mjamzito. She was already pregnant. Amefanya maandalizi. She had Alivyoenda hospitali. She had conceived and therefore she prepared. Wakamwambia una mimba ya mtoto wa kike. When she went to the hospital the doctors told her you are carrying a female child. Akasema mimi mimba yangu ni ya mtoto wa kiume. She said no I'm not carrying a, a girl I am carrying a boy. Wakasema mbone ni mtoto wa kike tunaona. But she said we, we, are, we are able to see a girl. Why are you saying you're, you're Sasa you're mume wangu mimi nilikuwa nimeenda Marekani kwenye kazi ya Mungu. I had traveled to the US for ministry. Mwaka akanitafuta kule Richmond. The husband sought for me I was in Richmond. Naye alikuwa ameenda kwenye mission. Was, he was also traveling work related trip. Akaniambia. He told me. Mbona madaktari wamesema wame kwamba mke wangu atazaa mtoto wa kike? Mama the doctors are telling me my wife is carrying a girl. Why? Na kama tumefuatana na hiyo prophecy sasa na mashini tumeshanunua na kila kitu ina maana huyu mtoto wa kike amekujaje? Now if we were working with your word and your and the prophecy you gave us We have already bought machines to be designers and now we are carrying a boy. How a, a girl? How will the boy come? Nikemwambia akija ni wa kike ina maana ni mawazo yangu. Lakini kama ni Mungu atakuja ni wa kiume na utamuita jina ya Joseph. I told him if you give birth to a baby girl then what I told you were my thoughts. But if you give birth to a baby boy then it was a divine instruction and therefore you shall call his name Joseph na hiyo biashara huyo mtoto kuingia ataingia na baraka ya biashara hiyo and the coming of that boy he will be accompanied with a blessing for that kwa hiyo akampigia mke wake activity that you're doing akampigia simu mke wake akasema mama amesema ni mtoto wa kiume her husband called her and said mama has told me you are carrying a boy mara ya pili alivyofanya test wakamwambia ni mtoto wa kike as she, when he went back for the second test the doctors again told her you are carrying a girl akasema kama ni wa kike siwa wa kwangu mimi najua kwamba nitazaa mtoto wa kiume na jina ni naye she spoke back and said if i'm carrying a girl the girl is not mine what i know is i am carrying a boy and already have his name alivyojifungua when she gave birth mungu apewe sifa glory to god akazaa mtoto wa kiume she gave birth to a baby boy na moja kwa moja akaingia kwenye hiyo biashara. And she went directly into the business. Unaweza ukaamini kwamba mambo ya kushona iliwabariki kiasi ya kwamba wakajenga nyumba. Do you believe that through that business they were so blessed they even built a house out of it? Maana mume wake hakuwa na mawazo ya kujenga huko. Because her husband did not have ideas of building a house then. Nikamwambia wewe. I told him. Endelea kulipa hizo hela za renti za, za PPF you want, to con- you want to continue paying rent here at PPF? Oh, if you want then well but it's not having a good way a good end. Kama mume wako hayuko tayari. If your husband is not ready. Lazima umuombe. Pray for him. Na katika kule kumuombea. And in prayer. Lazima umuombe ruhusa wewe uanze na ile baraka ulionayo. While praying for him ask permission from him to commence the blessing ndipo mume wake alimbariki akakubali akaanza kujenga that mume wake alivyokuja kuona akasema ah, hii nyumba ndogo chukua hela uongezee iwe kubwa zaidi that is when uh, he prayed she prayed for the husband the husband was blessed and the husband blessed her back when she started building that house and the husband saw the house the husband said This a small house. Can you please take this small money and expand this house? Sasa Rachel anapenda sana kuiga maisha yangu. Rachel loves to imitate my lifestyle. Wengine anakuja kuomba huku usiku analala pale kwenye ninavolala pale napokaa kwenye maombi. Sometimes she comes pray. Sijui ni vizuri ama ni vibaya. 
Sometimes she comes to pray the way I pray. She lies prostrate where I lie when praying. Siku moja alikuja asubuhi nyumbani kwangu asubuhi Jumapili alikuwa na shida fulani alitaka kuniona. One day early in the morning she came to my house. She wanted to see me urgently. Akanikuta ninatembea ninaomba kwenye garden. She found me walking in prayer in my garden. Akasema eh kumbe kuna maombi ya kuomba kwenye garden. And she said, "Oh, so I can pray while walking in my garden." Ah, basi naye akasema kitu lazima nifanye. She said, "I ought to do this as well." Baada ya wiki mbili after two weeks akaja kuniambia niombe naona kama maisha yamekuwa magumu. She came and told me pray for me life is becoming difficult. Kipindi hicho kazi ya mume wake ilikuwa imeisha. At that time the contract her husband contract had come to an end. Basi nikaanza kumuombea usiku nikaota. I I started praying for her. At night I I received Nik, a dream. Nikamwambia kesho yake nimeona Mungu anakutia kwenye biashara ya maua. I told her the following day that I see kweli, God si blessing you into Nikaona unatia mapoti unatia maua nikaona biashara yako ya maua inachanua I saw you having pots and putting flowers in the pots and I saw your business was prospering Ghafla nilivomwambia hivyo Suddenly when I told her that Kwanza hapo walikuwa bado wanajenga walikuwa wajaanza mambo ya maua Remember she, they were still building they had not yet started the business of flowers Kitu alichokifanya Alipita naenda Nairobi. What she did, she went to Nairobi. Akafanya training ya muda gani? She trained. Eh? Alifanya training ya 3 weeks. She went for a 3 weeks course. Baada ya karudi na ujuzi. Later on she came back with skills. Leo, today, anakula mamilioni ya hela kwa ajili ya maua. She's receiving millions of shillings through flowers. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord Jesus. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Ni kitu nataka kuambia ni hiki. What I want to tell you is this. Baada ya kusikia, after you've heard, usipoteze muda sana sana kuwaza 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 mpaka panakucha unawaza. Don't Lazima uchukue uamuzi. Wasting time pushing it ahead. You must take a resolve. Lazima uingie kwenye hatua ya kuchukua hatua. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Lazima upesiu kile kitu ambacho umesha kiamini. Ukitie kwenye matendo. You have to resolve to pursue that which you have believed. In other words, put it into practice. Baada ya muda wakija, after a while when they come. Wakimkuta pale wanaje excuse. And they find him there, they excuse themselves. Baadaye wakasikia tumeingia kwenye uchumba. Let alone they, they realize we are in courtship. Wakaanza ongea na dadangu na kakaangu. And they were talking to my brother and my sister. Mimi nilikuwa nimempenda sana Tris. I had loved Tris so much. Nilikuwa naona kama hata nikubali. I thought she would not accept Wakati me. Wakati naandaa mazingira. As I was preparing the way. Huu mwalimu anakuja tayari. This lecturer comes Yaani yani ni kama ametovertake. He has come from nowhere and he has overtaken us. Wewe unatia tu kwenye mawazo, mwingine ameshatia, ameshachukua decision. Listen, you re, you make it to remain in in your thoughts, another person will take a step and put it into practice. Mwingine anasema nilikuwa nimempenda, sasa je ulimpenda sasa? What a, next? Another person will say I loved he, I loved her. I, okay, fine. After loving her, what did you do? Watu wengi wanaishia kwenye mawazo. Some people remain at that level of thoughts. Unaweza kuwa ni kijana. You can be a young man. Unampenda msichana. You love a girl. Unakosa courage ya kumwambia. You fail to get the courage to tell Wakati her. Wakati unajikusanya nguvu. As you gather your act together. Mwingine anachomoka na mwambia. Somebody else comes and tells her. <laughs> Utajikusanya nguvu mpaka muda gani? How long will you take putting your act together? Usiposema mwingine atasema. If you don't speak the word somebody else will speak it. Unaanza kufanya biashara. You want to do business. Unawaza sana. You take too long procrastinating. Wakati mwingine anawaza mwingine ameanza hiyo biashara. Another person will come and take a step to do the business. Oh, unakuta tayari umesha poteza muda. You realize you have wasted time. Mawazo lazima yaambatane na decision. Thoughts have to be accompanied by a de- with a decision. Bwana asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Unapata kitu? Are you, are you getting something? Kile ambacho utatia kwenye matendo ndio cha kwako. What you will put into practice will belong to you. Ile ambayo utabaki kuwa ni mawazo ni desire itabaki kuwa desire mpaka mwisho. What remains desires and thoughts they'll remain there until the end. I wish I could do this. I wish I could do this. Natamani ingefanya hiki. Natamani ingefanya hiki. These wishes zitapotea. Natamani natamani will disappear. Lakini kile ambacho utakitia kwenye matendo But whatever you put in practice Ukishaanza the moment you take a step utaona kwamba hakuna ngisi ya kurudi nyuma maana umeshaanza you will reckon that there is no way to go back because you're already into it you'll go all the way 
Utaanza kutana na changamoto ya hicho kitu. You will meet with challenges of that activity. Utaanza kujua ugumu wa hicho kitu. You will realize the difficulties involved in accomplishing it. Wakati unaanza kufanya mambo ya gardening, as you start gardening, ulijua tu kwamba unapanda unavuna. You thought you just plant and you rip. Ama mambo ya shamba. Oh if you want to do farming. Wao ulijua tu utapanda na utavuna. You thought that it was all about sowing and reaping. Kumbe utaanza kugundua eh kumbe kuna wadudu. Yet in between you discover you have to Unapanda mboga. With insects. Pests. Mboga ukishazipanda mbegu zako. You plant vegetables. Wadudu wanakuja. After that you realize that there are insects pests that come. Wanakula hizo mboga. And they eat up the vegetables. Unasema sasa nitafanyaje? And you say what can I do? Unapanda maua. You plant flowers. Kesho unakuta yote yameliwa na, na, na wadudu. Then you realize that they have been eaten up with pests. Lakini kutakuwa mtaalamu atakwambia. But there is a professional farmer will come hii and tell maua, you. Hii maua, hii mbegu, hizi mboga. This seed and these vegetables. Zinapendwaga sana na wadudu they are liked so much by insects kwa hiyo ikitokea wadudu therefore when you see insects coming utaitibu namna abc this how to apply pesticides unaanza kugundua vitu ambavyo ulikuwa huvijui you discover things that you didn't know unaanza kujifunza vitu ambavyo ulikuwa huvijui and you learn things that you didn't know Unaanza kukutana kumbe kwenye hiyo biashara kuna hasara. You realize that in that business you can also suffer loss. Wengine wanafanya wana biashara ya maziwa. Some people here sell milk. Kwa sababu tu wanapenda ng'ombe. Just because they love cows. Na unavyoanza kufuga ng'ombe. And when you start rearing cows. Ukiwa mjini. In the Kumbe ugundui kwamba hizo hizo ng'ombe zinatakiwa zile pumba ama zile chakula fulani. When you are rearing cows in the urban areas you discover that cows have specific specific foods that they require Siku ya siku mpaka utafika kupata ng'ombe ana maziwa umeshapoteza hela nyingi sana Before you get your cow to produce milk you spend a lot of money in between there Sasa kama hautajitia nguvu Now if you don't get your act together Utasema mambo ya maua naacha You may give up even on flowers Mambo ya kushona naacha You'll give up on designing Mambo ya kufuga ng'ombe naacha You'll give up on rearing cows Haina faida You'll say they are not profitable Kumbe hapo ndio ulitakia kumuita Mungu tena. That is when and where you are supposed to call upon God. Kama ni Mungu alikwambia. If it's God who told you. Neema hiyo ipo. That grace is right there. Neema hiyo ipo. That grace is right there. Maana itageuka jibu kwa watu siku moja. Because that activity will become a solution to other people a day Hatu to come. Hatuombe tu kwa ajili ya mambo ya kiroho. We don't only pray for spiritual matters. Tunaombea kazi ya mikono yetu. We also pray for the work of our hands. Mimi nina nina nisi wangu ambaye mume wake anapenda sana mambo ya ng'ombe. I have a niece whose husband loves livestock keeping. Na anajua mke wake ni muombaji. And he knows that he, he, his wife is an intercessor. Anaambia mke wake. So he tells his wife. Ombea ng'ombe zangu. Pray for my cows. Wa, 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 wapate ujauzito wa ng'ombe za kike. That they may conceive <laughs> and they'll give birth to dairy cows. Sasa mimi nilikuwa sababu sijui mambo ya ufugaji siko nasema hii maombi ni maombi ya namna gani Now because I'm not a livestock keeper I was asking myself what kind of prayer points are this Yaani huyu mtu anasema mke wake aombe ili ng'ombe ziwe zizae watoto wa kike This man is praying that his wife should pray for the cows to bear and to produce uh, female cows kwa sababu ng'ombe ya kiume inahitajika tu moja lakini ya kike inazalisha because, inapata maziwa vitu vingi faida nyingi Because a bull you only need one bull but for you to get enough milk you need many dairy cattle Zikiwa zinaumwa anazitibu lakini anasema ambia anaambia mke wake ombezi ng'ombe zangu zisife na huu ugonjwa mm. You know when the when the animals are sick he tells his wife pray that my animals my cows will not die out of this disease Fikiria kipindi hicho hajaokoka lakini ana imani kwamba mtu akiombea hizo ng'ombe zitazaa watoto wa kike na hazitakufa. Hazita Remember at that particular fari, time he was he, he wasn't fari. born again. But he knew that when his wife prays then his cows will give birth to dairy cows and they will not die because of the sicknesses and Namuke diseases. Namke akaanza kuomba. And the wife would pray. Na wakanishuhudia kwamba kila tukiomba zinazaliwa za kike. Tukipunguza maombi zinazaliwa za kiume. And they would testify to me <laughs> that every time they would keep praying those cows would give birth to the other dairy cows. But when they stop praying bulls would be born. Kama unataka kuyashuhudia kwenye Biblia utasoma habari za Yakobo. If you want to attest that in the Bible, read in the 
read about the stories of Jacob. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Kwa hiyo lazima tuanze kuomba. Therefore we ought to start to pray. Tukikutana na hizo changamoto, when we encounter these challenges, let us not give up. Kama ni Mungu amekwambia, God was instructing na ugumu, when you meet difficulties. Lakini Mungu atakusaidia kutatoa ugumu. God will see you through those difficulties. Kwa maana hiyo, in other words, baada ya decision after taking a decision. Number 3 lazima uwe na determination. Number 3 you have to be determined. Ukiwa na determination. Determination. Lazima utapambana. Will help you to push on. Lazima utashinda hayo majaribu. You will push forward to overcome the difficulties. Hao vijana kina Daniel hawakugeuka mara kumi bora kwa ghafla. This young man in the book of Daniel chapter 1 did not become 10 times 10 times better in a single day. Hapana. No. Ni waamuzi wa baridi walio uchukua. They took a resolve and they were determined. Kumbuka walikuwa wamepelekwa matekani. Remember that they were in exile. Kwa hiyo haikuwa hali nzuri ya kufurahisha. Therefore it was not a good pleasing environment. Walikuwa kama watumwa. They were like slaves. Na hakika walikuwa watumwa. And indeed they were. Lakini kwa sababu walikuwa na foundation. But because they had a strong foundation. Foundation iliwafanya watamanike. A foundation caused them to be desirable. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord Jesus. Foundation ili wafanya wafikishwe hata kwenye hiyo palace. A foundation caused them even to be brought into the palace of the king. Hebu tusome mstari wa 8. Let us read verse 8. Tuone foundation ya imani hawa watu ilikuweje. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies nor with the wine which he drank therefore he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself daniel chapter 1 verse 8 swahili inasema hivi lakini daniel aliazimu moyoni mwake ya kuwa hatajitia unajisi kwa chakula cha mfalme wala kwa divai aliyokunywa basi he, akamuomba mm, yule mkuu mm, wa matowashi ampe ruhusa asijitie unajisi mstari wa 8 verse 9 the bible says basi mungu alimjalia danieli kupata kibali na huruma how to protect unaweza enda kwenye shule kwenye university You can go to a school to a university. Unaenda Ulaya, unaenda nchi za mbali. You go to other countries, far countries. Unakuta watoto wengine wa umri wako wanakunywa pombe, wanavuta sigara. You find other students of Wana your, boyfriend. your peers. They involve themselves in drinking wine Wana and sen. beers. Wanakwambia, mbona wewe haunywi? And they may question you. Mbona wewe hauvuti sigara? Why aren't you smoking? Mbona wewe hauna boyfriend? Why aren't you drinking? Alafu Why don't you have a boyfriend? Nisipofanya hivyo. Wataniona mimi mshamba. And you may tell yourself if I don't involve myself in these activities they will look Tuko at me pamoje. as rudimentary. Wengine vijana watanionaje? What, what will my peers see me to be? Wataona mimi ni mshamba. They will look at me as rudimentary. Sio ushamba. It's not being rudimentary. Hiyo ni foundation yako. It's a foundation. Hiyo ni foundation yako. It is your foundation. Ambao itakufanya uendelee na Mungu. That will cause you to progress with God. Ebu one ni watu wangapi wamepata kibali namna gani? Look at how many people who have received favor. Wengine ni watumwa. Some are slaves. Wao wamepelekwa kwenye nyumba mfalme. They went to the king's palace. Alafu mfalme anasema, oh, "Can you have this?" Anampokeza chakula kizuri. Litambikiwa na miungu. The king gives them delicacies. Ma wine. Food offered to idols. Wine, alcohol. Labda ingekuwa wewe na mimi. If it were you and me. Tungesema, "Eh, hey, kupata fursa kama hii you would say oh, kukana mfalme what an opportunity to sit with the king nisije nika 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 offend kwa kuto kwa kuto kuchangia hiyo delicacy za not taking what is giving me lakini walikataa katu katu but these people made a resolve and they said no wakasema hatuwezi kujichafua we shall not defile ourselves walivuamua hivyo when they made that resolve mungu akaonekania god revealed himself to them bwana yesu asifiwe praise the lord jesus mungu ataimarisha kazi ya mikono yako god will establish the work of your hands kama unaamua kuwa na foundation ya kimungu ambao haitikisiki if you resolve to have a divine foundation that is unshakable ukishaanza biashara hiyo when you start that business unaanza kutumia manyanga unaanza kutumia njia ambayo sio za kimungu now you become a trickster you use ways that are not pleasing to god kauongo kidogo a little lie tutabia tabia tu ajabu ajabu 
some strange behaviors start coming up. Lakini hawa walikataa. But this young man refused. Kubadilisha zile tabia za kimungu. To change from the ways of God. Na Biblia ikasema wakapata kibali mbele za Mungu. And the Bible says they received favor before the Lord. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord Jesus. Lazima uwe na determination kwa kile ulichokiamini. You have to be determined in that which you believe. Lazima ujue foundation ya maisha yako ni nini. You must have a foundation that is a purpose of your life. Na hata utakapokutana na hizo changamoto lazima utafute njia ya kuzitatua. And when you encounter those challenges you must find a way of resolving them. Ukiona mtu amefanyikiwa leo, when you see a person successful today, usione tu kwamba papo mtu amefanyikiwa. Don't think it was automatic. Hapana, ni njia ndefu sana. No, no, it's such a long process. Ili mtu afike kwenye mara 10 ubora zaidi. For somebody to become 10 times better. Kuna njia ndefu sana. There is a long way. Kuna changamoto nyingi amekutana nazo. Lakini ile maono yako. But your vision. Kile ulichokiamini. That which you believe. Lazima kiendelee. It has to be sustained. Lazima uwe determined. You have to be determined. Kwamba haya machangamoto yanakuja. That regardless of the challenges that Nina nguvu juu ya hizo changamoto. I have power over those challenges. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord Jesus. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord Jesus. Lakini Mungu akisema anafanya. But when God speaks he does it. Labda hata kuonesha step by step itakuweje. He may not show you step by step how that thing will come to pass. Lakini unavotii. But as you obey. Unavotia maisha yako kwenye msingi wa kimungu. As you place your life on the foundation of God. Hakika Mungu atakuja kutendea mambo ya ajabu sana. Surely God will come to do for you big things. Tulivyofanya hivyo. As we did that. Mungu akaleta promotion kwa mume wangu. God brought promotion to my husband. Bwana asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise him. Baada ya miaka miwili Mungu akasema mnunue kiwanja cha Rwanda huko kwa ajili ya kazi ya Mungu. Two years later the Lord told us buy a plot in Rwanda for the work of God. Nakumbuka mume wangu alichukua loan ya kununua hicho kiwanja na alikuwa miaka miwili alikuwa analipa loan ya hicho kiwanja ambao sasa hivi na kanisa ya Rwanda huko. I remember my husband acquiring a loan to buy that piece of land for the work of God and for two years he was servicing a loan where today there is a, a church on that land lazima uwe determined you have to be determined mungu akikwambia kitu usiwe na mashaka when god instructs you do not doubt mungu hana deni ya mtu god does not owe anybody akikwambia kitu hata kama ni kigumu wewe fanye when he tells you something well, however difficult siku atakuja kukujibu The day he comes to Si kutaanza kuona faida hayo unayoyafanya. The day you see the manifestation of what you have been doing. Kama ni nyumba tumetoa. If it is a house we have given house. Kama ni magari tumetoa. If it is vehicles we have given vehicles. Kiwanja cha milioni mil, eh, mil 200 ya kitanzania tuseme uh, a 100,000 USD a, kwa kiwanja cha kanisa. A piece of land that is equivalent to 100,000 US 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 dollars. 200 million Tanzania shillings. Ambea mwenzako kuna Mungu mbinguni. Tell your neighbor there is God who is in heaven. Kuna Mungu mbinguni. There is God in heaven. Anayeona. Who sees? Sio kwamba vitu vitakuwa rahisi. I am not saying that it will be easy. Lakini acha msingi wako uwe wa kimungu. But my point is let your foundation be divine. Sasa ukimfanyia uki Mungu hivyo. Now if you do that for God. Yeye atashindwa kukujengea kweli. Will he fail to build for you? Kwa hiyo hayo ndio mambo nilimwambia ule dada. So those are the words that I shared with that lady. Kwamba naweza nikakuwekea mikono. I can lay my hands on you. Lakini uko tayari kulipa gharama nilioilipa? Are you ready to pay the price that I paid? Uko tayari kulipa hiyo gharama? Are you ready to pay that price? Nikaanza kumwambia hiyo historia. I started sharing with her that history. Ukipanda nyumba utavuna nyumba. When you saw a house you will be, you will you will Ukipanda shamba utavuna mashamba. When you saw a plot or a piece of land you will rip many pieces of land kile ambacho unakiamini whatsoever thing you believe lazima ukilipie gharama yoyote you have to pay a price lazima uinvest maisha yako kwenye hicho kitu invest your life to that thing bwana umekuwa mpole sana unatafakari nini why are you so quiet what are you meditating upon umeipata hiyo are you getting these things umeipata are you receiving lazima uwe tayari kulipa gharama ya kile unachokiamini you must be ready to pay the price for that which you believe Lazima uingie kumjua Mungu kwa ajili ya kile unachokiamini. You have to go deep to know God better in that which you believe. Deeper devotion. Uingie ndani kwa Uingie ndani kwa makini. 
deeper devotion. Kama Mungu amekwambia uta, utaongea na watu, utamtumikia Mungu, uta utahubiri, uta, chochote utakachokifanya, lazima ukiingie kwa undani. If God has told you you will reach out to many, you will preach to many, then you must go deep in that which God has told you. Kama unafanya hicho kitu ukifanye katika ubora ambao kwenye huo mji ni wewe ndio namba 1. If you are doing something that God has instructed you, do it with the excellence that makes you to stand out in that area, in that city. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Kwani si kuna maua tu mahali kote? There are flowers all over. Mpaka watu wakuite watumie maua ina maana wameona maua yako ni ya tofauti. For people to call you bring flowers to us is because they have realized you your flowers are unique. Sasa hivi anafanya mambo ya gardening sio tu kuuza maua anaenda anafanya landscaping anafanyia watu ana design garden zao anapata pesa. Right now she's a gardener. She comes to your place. She can design and tell you how your landscape should look like and she gets income out of that. If Kama wewe unapenda mambo ya ujenzi, if you love construction, jenga mpaka kila mtu atahitaji, atatamani kile ulichokijenga. Build something a structure that everybody will admire what you have built. Kama umejifunza mambo ya kompyuta, ingia ndani kiasi ya kwamba kwenye mji wa Arusha kila mtu atakuwa na shida ya kutengeneza kompyuta, ni wewe utaitwa. If you are an IT expert, then do it with devotion. Everyone in in Arusha will look for you when they want a solution to their computer problems. Bwana asifiwe. Praise the Lord Jesus. Bwana asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Lakini kumbe nimegundua na mimi kwenye strength yangu napenda napenda excellence. Napenda excellence kwenye kila kitu napenda sio habari ya hela napenda excellence tangu nikiwa mtoto mdogo. I have discovered that in my DNA I love excellence. I want to do things at their best. Now that is just part and parcel of me right from when I was a child. It's in me. Nikiwa nyumbani kwetu walikuwa wananiita salo komple. Salo komple ni kwamba niliambia babangu kuna siku alinunua viti, akanunua viti vya watu wawili na kitu cha mtu mmoja. Sasa nikawaambia papa, kwani usinunue tu salo komple, yani ununue seti nzima ya tatu, mbili, moja. Kwenye utoto wangu sikujua kwamba amenunua viti tatu kwa sababu hakuwa na hela ya kununua complete set. Mimi nikamwambia kwani usinunue tu complete set? Tukaipanga vizuri. Kanasema angalia huyu. Wananiita salo complete. Ukifika nyumbani utakuta wananiita salo complete. Was... Siku alijitahidi wakaleta TV nikasema kwa nini tusitafute TV ya ya kala ambayo ina, ina kala nzuri isiwe hii white and black. Yaani ni kwa tunapenda vitu ambavyo ni vizuri. Since I was young, in fact I was nicknamed Salo Complet back at home because I loved better things, I loved excellent things. My dad bought uh, uh, some sofas for our house and by then there were only two, a seat for one person and a seat for two people. Then I questioned my dad asking him, "Dad, why didn't you buy a seat? I mean a complete set?" In my childhood I didn't know that he didn't have enough money to buy a complete set but because I loved excellence because I loved better things I would always ask for better things even the TV I didn't want black and white I would ask my parents why didn't you get a colored TV why because I just love excellence when you go back home today they call me salo complete because they know that I love excellence Nilikuwa shuleni dadangu akinipa hela yeye anaenda nanunua gauni kama kumi hivi. Ananipa sema amount mimi nanunua mbili. While in school. Anasema wewe ni mwanafunzi nunua anasema nataka hizo mbili. While in Zuri school, mbili. We, if you were given pocket money, <laughs> my sister would go and buy 10 dresses, but I would buy only two. They would tell me, "Come on, buy more, you are a student." I would say, "No, just give me the two." Nilivoolewa mume wangu kanipa hela ninunue vitu vya ndani. Nikanunua kimoja na tukafanya tukatengeneza sitting room tuka, akasema hii hela ingetoa na dining ningesema tuache dining tunue sitting room nzuri tukae tumechukua sahani hivi siku tutapata hela tutanunua dining kimoja kizuri kingine kizuri taratibu sio lazima upate vyote kwa mara moja kimoja kizuri kimoja kizuri mpaka utakamilisha when i got married uh, my husband would give me money to furnish our house I would buy a, a set of sofas, a set of seats, 
But he would tell me the money that I gave you was enough even to cater for a dining table. I would say, no, no, no. I would rather get one item that is the best. And as time goes by, we'll get some more money. We'll buy a dining that is the best. Don't be in a hurry. Get an item that is excellent and add <laughs> unto that. Sasa kama nimekuja kufika kwenye consultancy ya nyumba. Sasa alivo niuliza kadi. Nikegundua sina kadi ya kuhusu kazi hizo. Nikawambia zimeisha nita kutaftia. <laughs> Sijue nilise, nilikose, lakini nilimuambia tu kwamba nitakutafutia. So today, <laughs> today they come to me for, consul, for, for consultancy activities, building their houses, they want ideas, and they say, Mama, please give us your card. As far as this work is concerned, consultation, I don't have cards for that. I tell them, they are finished, I'll look for you if you want. Wana sifiwe. Amen. Wana sifiwe. Kumbe naweza kwa niko nalilia mungu, nibariki, mungu, nisaidie, tazama, nimekuwa mwenyewe, sina mungu. Kumbe, kuna vitu ambavyo viko ndani ya damu yako ambavyo tayari ni kitu ambacho kineza kika kufanya, ukapata kitu. Wanaesu wa sifiwe. Iyo ni kitu ambo tayari mungu wa mekupa, anajua siku moja ita, itakupa faida flan. You see, there is a possibility you can cascade into playing, praying with, with, with complaints and saying, oh Lord, I want this, oh Lord, I want this, oh Lord, I don't have this, I am alone, I don't have anybody else, I am alone. Not knowing that there are things that God has placed in you which are actu actually gifts. God knows when you put these things in practice one day, they will be of benefit to you. Tuko pamoja. Are we together? Number ten. Number five. Daily discipline. Nidhamu ya kila siku. Kama unataka kufika kwenye malengo. If you want to get to your objectives. Lazima uwe na daily discipline katika hicho kitu. You must be disciplined on a daily basis concerning that matter. Kuna siku hali takuwa ngumu nasikia hutaki kufanya hicho kitu. Lakini lazima siku hadi siku utie discipline ili siku moja uwe ten times better. Kulingana na wengine ambao watakuwa kwenye market yako. There are days when you'll feel, you'll feel like not doing it. You'll just feel I don't want to go on on this. But you must be consistent. Push yourself to do it every day. Be disciplined because you want to become ten times better one day. Lazima ujifunzi. You have to learn. Kama Rachel, ilibidi atenge wiki tatu, aende kujifunza mambo ya maua. Learn new skills. Rachel traveled all the way to Nairobi for a course, a three weeks course, just to know how to become a good florist. Mi naongeaga nena, sema hili uwa nalipenda, ni kimuambeva, ananipatia na jina ilo uwa. Na tabia ya ilo uwa. You know, Linapenda jua, ili linapenda mwanga mchache, ili halipendi jua, jina hake ni hivi, mimi sijui. I admire something about Rachel. Rachel has become a professional in her area that she can tell you the name of the flower, the behavior of that flower, she will tell you this flower should not be exposed to the sun or this one should be exposed at this for this amount of sunlight. She has become a professional in her in Unawezu her kapenda uwa ukalitia kwenye jua. Kesho umetoa ela nyingi limenyauka kumbe ni uwa ambao inapenda kivuli. You can buy a flower at a very high cost and then the following day you put it out, expose it to the sun. That flower will not fl blossom. Why? Because you have done something wrong to it. So you should know what flower should be exposed to sunlight. Kwa hiyo, sita sikia hibu ya kujifunza kwa ke, kwa sababu ya amesha jifunza, amesha bobe. And therefore, I will not feel shy. I will not hesitate to learn from Rachel. Why? Because she has become an expert and a professional in that area. Kina Daniel walikuja tu na foundation ya misingi yao ya kimungu. Lakini mambo mengine wali ya jifunza huko huko. Daniel, Babylon. Daniel came with that foundation, favor of the Lord. They went with that foundation in their lives. They were anchored on God. When they went to Babylon, they learned new things while in exile. Kwanza walianza wakajifunza hiyo hiyo lugha ya Kikardai. Number one, they learned a new language. Ambao walikuwa hawaijui of the Chaldeans and wakajifunza hesabu za huko, wakajifunza Vitu vingi vya huko ambao walikuwa wa vijuu. They learned even the, the, the subjects of the... Shindwa anzie wapi, amalizie wapi. She realized that in her teaching, she couldn't know where to start. 
and where to finish. Nikaanza kumuona ana sweat kweli. I saw her troubled. Ana tetemeka. Trembling. Basi ikabidi niingilie kati nikaanza nikasema okay tuingie kwenye maombi nikafundisha. I I went, I, ah. I intervene. I told people let's get in prayer and later on I thought. Akaniambia nilivyosimama tu mbele za watu nikawa naona jinsi watu wanaanza ona kwamba sijui kufundisha. She taught me the time I stood before people I got scared I panicked and I thought people would find me not able to teach. Kumbe unaweza ukafikiri kwamba ni rahisi tu kusimama mbele ya watu na kuwafundisha kumbe hujui kwamba kuna ugumu wake pia. You may think it is easy to stand before people and teach not knowing that there is there's difficult difficulties also. Ni kama wale wacheza wanaona mpira kwenye TV wanasema angepiga hivi angeingiza hivi lakini ukemtia hapo ataanguka kwanza mguu utavunjika hajui hata gisi ya kuendesha mpira. <laughs> Just like spectators who tell you that man should have shot it this way he should have done this way but if you put them on the field to play before they even start the leg breaks. <laughs> Kwa lazima tuwe na diligence. So we have to be diligent. Twende hatua kwa hatua. BD, you have to take a step after another. Uwezi kujenga nyumba ikakamilika kwa siku moja lakini bricks moja, bricks mbili inafanya inafanya mstari moja, baada ya siku imefanya ukuta unaendelea hivyo hivyo na hivyo ndani ya mambo ya kimungu na kazi ya mikono yako uwezi kubobea kwa siku moja lazima uende hatua kwa hatua lakini uwe na diligence uwe systematic ujifunze kila point kila kitu wakakuta hao watu wako mara kumi bora kuliko wenzao they discovered that daniel and his friends were 10 times better than their competitors maombi yangu my prayer today ni kwamba nyinyi wana wa zion is that you children of zion wana wa mguso sons of impact mahali kote mtakako wherever you go mujikute mara kumi bora kuliko wengine you find yourselves 10 times better than others ipokee kwa jina la Yesu receive that in Jesus name pokea hiyo neema receive that grace kwa kila unachokifanya in whatever you do ujikute uko mara kumi bora be 10 times better ujikute uko bingwa be a champion huo ndio mguso that is impact ambao Mungu ametupatia that god has given us inabidi neema we require grace ili tufanye hizo kazi so that we can do all those works na tugeuke jibu and become an answer a solution simama kwa miguu yako stand your feet Mungu ametupa huduma ya kuleta mguso kwa mataifa god is giving us a ministry to be to bring impact to the nations lazima ifike mahali kila mtu aelewe mguso wake ni upi katika maono haya you have to get to a point where you know where your impact is in this vision Haya maono ni mapana ni makubwa sana. It's a wide big vision. Mguso wako ni upi katika haya maono? What your impact in this vision? Huo mguso utakufanyikisha. And will that vision that impact benefit you? Na utakuwa jibu kwa watu wengi. And how will you become a solution to other the rest? Hiyo ndio mguso ambao Mungu anahitaji. That's the impact that God requires of you. Kiroho tutakuwa na mguso. Spiritually we shall bring impact. Kimwili tutakuwa na mguso. And also we shall bring impact in the Kazi physical. ya mikono yetu tutakuwa na mguso. The work of our hands will bring impact. Lazima tuzingatie foundation. We have to focus on the foundation. Ya kimungu. The divine foundation. Kwa sababu bila foundation. Because without a foundation. Tutachanganyikiwa na mambo mengi. We will be confused. Na tutashindwa kufika kwenye malengo. And we will fail to get to our purpose. Inua mikono yako. Lift up your hands. Anza kumwambia Mungu. Start talking to God. Speak to God. Kazi yoyote ambayo utaifanya bila neema ya Mungu haitafanyikiwa. Every work that you do without the grace of God it will not prosper. Lakini kwa neema ya Mungu. But by God's grace. Tutatenda makuna maajabu. We shall do exploits. Lazima tumjue huyu Mungu. We have to know our God. Vijana walipeleka kwa mawatumwa. This young men were taken to exile. Lakini waleta mguso ndani ya nchi hiyo. But they brought impact in that country karne na karne century after century wafalme walikuwa wanaondoka wengine wanakuja lakini vijana hao kings and kingdoms will come wakafanya Mungu wao wakafahamika but this young man caused their god to be known wakapata ujuzi wa ajabu sana they received immaculate skills hatupoteze muda kufanya yale tunayoyafanya we are not wasting time to do what we are doing anza kumuomba Mungu start praying ask speak to your god Open your mouth and pray. Hallelujah.
una nini mkononi what do you have in your hand what do you have in your hand nguvu zako ziko wapi where is your strength kama hauna determination ndo wakati wa kumwambia Mungu if you don't have determination it is time now to ask god for it kama unaanzaga vitu unashindwa kumaliza ndo wakati wa kumwambia Mungu if you start something and you fail to accomplish it it is now time to tell the lord about it come on pray in jesus name open your lips and pray in jesus name grant us lord the spirit of excellence father ninaiona kesho yako bora zaidi i see you tomorrow better Kurama senderere Zeke telebosi kitriala la baba Senderebosi kitriala la baba Zondoro bose ketereala la baba baba Riba seke telebosi kitria Rama zondoro bose ketereala la baba Riala baba 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 Kariala la base ketelele Senderebosi kitriala la Kererebo sikitiri ala la baba Kala mazendererebo Sikitererebo sikitiri ala la baba Hori ala baba 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 Hori ala la mazendererebo Zeketerebo sikitia Santes 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 Yesu ndiye mwamba wa maisha yetu. Jesus is the rock of our lives. Yeye ndiye foundation. He is the foundation. Acha wokovu wetu uwe foundation wa, wa yale yote tunayoyafanya. Let our salvation be the foundation of all that we do. Tusifanye kama wengine wanavyofanya. Let us not do like others do. Tufanye kama Mungu anataka tufanye. But let us do as per the requirement of God. Tufanye kulingana na neno la Mungu. In accordance with the word of God. Hayo mengine yote. The rest. Hakika Mungu atatuzidishia. Surely the Lord will add unto us. Ataimarisha kazi ya mikono yetu. He will establish the work of our hands. Atatupa neema. He will grant us grace. Ya kutusaidia katika utendaji. To help us in our doing. Katika utumishi. In service. In ministry kwa ajili ya utukufu wa jina the glory of his name katika jina la Yesu in Jesus name baba tunasema asante father we are grateful tumeachilia maneno yako ya uzima we have released your word of life tunaomba maneno haya yageuke kuwa mbegu ndani ya mioyo ya watoto wako we wapu. pray that this word will become seed in the lives of your children tunaomba pia kwa ajili ya meza ya bwana we also pray for the holy communion mkate pamoja na kikombe the bread and the cup tunavitakasa kwa jina lako we lapu. sanctify them in your name tunavitakasa kwa neno hili sanctify them with this word tunavoenda kuvitumia bwana as we protect acha mbegu hii anguke ndani ya moyo ulio safi fall in a clean heart kama hawa vijana kina Daniel waleta mguso katika nchi ya ugeni just like this young man brought impact in a strange land acha mguso wetu uonekane kwa mataifa let our impact be known and be seen in the nations na kila atakaye sogelea meza hii and whoever comes close to this table umbe jambo jipya ndani ya maisha form a new thing in their lives yale ambayo ni mawazo whatever be has remained as a thought yasibaki kama mawazo should not remain so wachukue maamuzi let them make a resolve na wayafanyie kazi and to put that decision in katika practice katika in Jesus name wape moyo wa determination give them the spirit of determination wape deep devotion na wewe give them deep devotion with ili wafunulie bwana so reveal to them jinsi ya kuenenda hatua kwa so hatua so that they take step by step baba wape daily discipline father grant them daily discipline katika jina la yesu in jesus name wape diligence grant them diligence wape moyo wa kujifunza grant them a heart to learn wape moyo wa kujifunza hatua a kwa hatua a heart to learn step by step ili bwana so that lord wafikie mahali they will get to a point siku moja one day wajikute they'll find themselves wako mara kumi bora they'll be 10 times better zaidi ya jinsi walivyokuwa more than the, when they were tunajua inawezekana in that position i know it is possible katika jina la yesu in jesus name tembea pamoja nasi walk with us neema yako your grace uwe pamoja nasi be with us katika kila hatua in every step katika jina la yesu in jesus name amen amen Win Ministries Seeking
Go on to Impact National.